I audible? Yes, yes no. no. I'll make it. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, when Akhil came up to me and said he had invited me to give a talk, I asked Akhil, Akhil, what do you want me to talk on? He said, it's your choice, it's your talk. Uh, he wanted me to give a talk on black money. I'm sorry, being in the income tax department, I can't talk my talk. But I thought about it. And when I was thinking about it, an experience which is around six months old came up to my mind. In March this year, I had been to Lakshmati. And it was all very fun filled and I did scuba diving work. You guys must have seen in this movie, uh, Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. I wouldn't say it was that great a moment for me, but certainly this scuba diving has something to do with your mind. So what struck my mind, I'll come to that. Before that, I'll tell you a small story. There were these four friends, not too long ago, writing these signs of Facebook and WhatsApp etc. These were online friends who hadn't actually met each other. The names were Jack, Jill, Dip, and Phil. Please listen with attention, that's meaning it. Jack, Jill, Dip, and Phil. They used to share photographs and messages and pictures of their places and all. Jill got very interested with Jack's place. He saw that Jack's place had all green vassal grassland, lush greener. So what Jill, Jill did, Jill shifted to Jack's place. And Jill started telling Dip and Finn that this is really an awesome place. This is the place to be in. So Dip and Finn, like me, Okay, so Dip and Finn, curious guys like me, thought, yeah, we should go check out that place. So what they did, they booked tickets and traveled to the place. Now at this juncture, as soon as they reached their destination, the arrival point where Jack and Jill used to live, there was a huge board which narrated a story about Jack and Jill. The story, we know it pretty well. We learned it as a rhyme when we were kids. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Okay. The point is the interpretation that Dip and Finn did. Dip and Finn thought getting a pail of water from hill must be really difficult. Getting the pail of water, man. So they thought let's do it and let's prove Jack and Jill that we are better than them. Okay? Now, this happens with all friends like us, right? We want to outwit each other, be better than each other. So, Dip and Finn decided, so Dip and Finn decided that they will go and fetch a pail of water. They started walking, they started moving up the hill. When they started moving up the hill, what happened is another right? This time, Dip and Finn went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Dip fell down and broke his nose and Finn came tumbling after. Now, what's the difference? By the time they came down, they were suffocating. They were frustrated. They were irritated. They were unable to bear being at that place. They immediately rushed towards the place that they had come. There was a shore nearby. So they immediately rushed to that shore and they decided to jump into the ocean. And they, they didn't even think for a second. They jumped into the ocean. Jack and Jill, at that point when Dip and Finn were jumping, they saw these people jumping into the ocean. Jack thought he, it's his responsibility to save his friends and went running to the shore. And Jill is shouting from back. He's saying, hey Jack, Dip and Finn have pinged me after jumping. 
they have pinged him on WhatsApp and they say, we are better off here. This is our poem. Okay. A little confusing story. I'll tell you why it's confusing. Please. Next slide. On your right bottom is Jack, left bottom is Jill, right top is Finn, and left top is Dip. Okay. The starfish is Finn, the dolphin is Dip, the sheep is Jill, and the cow is Jack. Okay. Now, the intelligent ones amongst you which I believe all of you are, would have got my story and would have got my point. Those who haven't yet got my point can continue to listen. <laughs> Next slide. These are the green grasslands that Jill was talking about. This is Jill and his entire family, joint family, everybody. <laughs> They're having a merry time here. Next. This is Jack's native place from where Jack had actually come. It's also grasslands, not so lush. Next slide. This is Dip's place. Next. This is Finn's place. Now, please remember these photographs. They make some sense. Next. This is where, from where they used to ping on Facebook. This is where they jumped into. Next. <sighs> okay. Now let's leave the story for some time. Okay. This is a European village in southern Germany, I suppose. I don't remember the name of the village. It's pretty difficult to spell German villages. Next. This is an Indian village close to Nizamabad. Next. This is a European town, an Italian town, I suppose. Next. This is our own Jodhpur, the blue city. Next. This is Trichy, with all its randomness and color. Next. This is the Lajpat market in Delhi. Next. This is Tinagar market in Chennai. That's all slides that I have for you. Now we'll try to correlate between the story and what we are. We, for some reasons, people say, because we were not independent for many years, because we were best looking for many years, for whatever the reasons, we have this desire to go to greener pastures. That is the place where we believe life but we often forget that that is the place where life is for Jack and Jill. They eat grass, not we. We don't eat grass. Okay? Now, I'll tell you why we don't eat grass and why we are not Jack and Jill. We'll, can we go back to the pictures? No, stop it there. You can stop it there. Have a look at this village. Yeah, here. Have a look at this village. Okay? Next slide. Now have a look at this village. You tell me which one of these is Jack and Jill's place and which one of these is your place. Obviously the second one, right? I don't have to tell you that it is a village near Nizamabad. Actually, I shouldn't have. Despite all that, you would have known seeing this randomness, clustered nature, okay? And, you know, at first look, it looks pretty confusing. But this is, this is the place where we have all lived for ages. You, your father, your forefathers, everybody traces to such kind of places. What does that mean? Next. See this town. How many of your Indian towns have you seen which are like this? This is Jack's town, not your town. Next. This is 
how your town is. If you were to paint Kakinada in blue color, this is how it would be. If you would not, this is how it would be. Okay? So please don't tell me you belong to Jack and Jill's place. But what happens, uh, why do we want to go to Jack and Jill's place? Because we want to eat lush green grass. What do you get if you eat lush green grass? You eat it the whole day and somebody in the evening milks you. And you're very happy because you're getting to eat the grass. He is very happy because he's able to milk it. But why I am telling you that for some reason you might be more like a fish and not like Jack and Jill is because see this randomness I now try to remember those pic pictures of Dip and Finn's place that I was showing you. Random, colorful. Now let's get into a little bit of imagination because all our speakers today were talking a lot about imagination. Let's get you into a test of imagination. When you try to imagine yourself inside an ocean, what do you imagine? Challenges, threats, dangers, extreme high randomness, density, but that's where Dip and Phil flourish. Dip and Finn flourish in all that chaos, randomness, challenges, threats and dangers because they are built for it. They have gills, they have fins and they have a rudder that gives them perfect direction. Jack and Jill cannot live in such places. Now because Jack and Jill have written in their books that randomness, chaos is something that's not good for urban development and because people cannot live in such places and have given lower standards of living there. It does not mean that for you it is less suitable. Because you have it in you. You have the fins and the gills and the tails to dance in this randomness. Next. Does anyone of you know the name of this ocean? the Indian Ocean. You already have one. Okay? The only problem here is we live in darkness, darkness of mind, where we think we are actually living in a well, we need to get out of the well. But the point is, once you switch on your, the lights of your mind, then you suddenly realize that it's not well, maybe it's a pond, more light, you get to know maybe it's not a pond, it's a lake, or even more light, which makes you think that it's actually an ocean, an ocean of opportunities. And with all opportunities come threats and challenges. Nobody disagrees with it. But you need to realize that threats and challenges are what make you what you are. If your thoughts are random, then British scientists say that your thoughts are fertile. If you can live in chaos, it means you can live anywhere else, but you can live in chaos. If you've lived it all your life, then you can live in it more. But they are your strengths, learn to use them. Okay? I'll not eat into your time much because this is the last one and I see a few of them are already sleeping. Okay? <laughs> Next slide. All credits to Wikipedia. I have not taken any of those pics. Next slide. These are the only pics that I have taken. And let me assure you, I have actually gone to Lakshadweep. Okay. The, now coming back to the point of having scuba diving and what I thought during the scuba diving. Why all these thoughts came to my mind, all these ideas and thoughts and came to my mind when I was doing a dive is because I needed to breathe hard, you know. Having an oxygen cylinder also, you need to breathe really hard. Take deep breaths. You need to be really conscious of yourself. You always have the fear, what if I don't go back up? And you have this weightlessness inside you. You keep feeling as if you're drifting away and it's your guide who has to ultimately save your life. But at that moment, I was watching these fishes. 
they are very calm, very relaxing, having a merry time as if it's a party time. For me, something that's so difficult, how is it so easy for them? Then I try to put myself in a vicious position and think some things which might be really abnormal and really difficult for others, you as a fish, in your own home, you can do it and you can do wonders with it. Thank you.